Welcome to the Power of the Word, brought to you by Grace Apostolic Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jamaica. Our faith at best is weak. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief, is the topic of today's Bible study. Our host, Pastor Bishop Dr. Glenton Dennis, will delve into this intriguing subject. May we apply this word to our hearts. God bless. It's my privilege to again salute you in the only saving name, the name of Jesus. To him be all the glory for his continued grace and mercy. Today I would like to speak on the topic, Lord, I believe. Help though my unbelief. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark 9 verse 24 states, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help though my unbelief. Reading from the Hebrew text, it reads, Immediately crying out, the father of the child was saying, I believe. You must continually help my unbelief. Fellow saints, we understand this to mean assist me against unbelief. Give me power to believe in thee. The father of a child was saying, I believe. Lord, I have faith. I do put confidence in thee. Though I know that my faith is not as strong as it should be. Lord, help me. The word Lord here in the Greek is kurios. This word here signifies merely master or sir, as it does sometimes in the New Testament. Fellow saints, we have no evidence that the Father had any knowledge of the divine nature of our Savior. And he applied the word probably as he would have done to any other teacher or worker of miracles. He said, help though my unbelief, supply though the defects of my faith. Lord, give me strength and grace to put entire confidence in thee. Everyone who comes to the Savior for help has need of offering prayers of this similar nature. In 1 John 5, 14, we read, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. In our unbelief and our doubts, we need to have aid. Nor can we even put sufficient reliance on him without his gracious help. In 1 John 5, 15, we read, If we... And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. My fellow brethren, God wants to help us, but observe his gentlemanly character. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Fellow saints, nothing can be more touching are natural than this, an anxious, broken father, distressed at the condition of his son. The man having beseeched the disciples in vain for the deliverance of his son, came to the Savior the last and only hope he now had. And not having full confidence that he had the proper qualification to be aided, he wept in the presence of them all. In Mark 9, 24, the text says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. The man's request, startling in its paradoxical phrasing, is quite thought-provoking. How can the man say he believes and at the same time ask for help in overcoming unbelief? The full context of the man's prayer, I believe, help my unbelief, help 
make him his meaning clear, my fellow saints. The Lord Jesus had just returned from the Mount of Transfiguration, where he was transfigured before them when he came upon a large crowd surrounding his disciples. An argument was taking place and people were stirred up. Jesus asked what was going on and a man from the crowd explained that the disciples had been trying to cast a demon out of his son but had failed in their attempt. Jesus said, You unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me according to Mark 9 and verse 19. My fellow saints, the boy was brought to the Lord Jesus. But when the spirit saw the Lord Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth according to Mark 9 and verse 20. After the boy's father further explained his son's condition, he said to the Lord Jesus, If you can do anything, Lord, take pity on us and help us, account to verse 22. I observe how the Lord, amen, answered. He assured the man that everything is possible for one who believes, account to verse 23. He said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. My fellow saints, immediately the boy's father explained, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And so then immediately um, upon hearing the man's request, I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus immediately spoke to the unclean spirit and permanently cast it out of the boy. Later, the Lord Jesus' disciples inquire why they were unable to cast the demon out. The Lord Jesus told them, this kind, this kind come out only by prayer, according to Mark 9 and verse 29. Quote, this kind comes forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. The Hebrew text says it this way, this kind is in no way able to come out except in prayer. As we read Isaiah 58 verse 6, the prophet declares, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke? The dominant theme in this passage is faith and doubt. The Lord Jesus initially responds to the hearing of the boy's condition, expresses his disappointment in lack of faith. You unbelieving generation, he said, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? And so, fellow saints, the boy's father initially seems to display a lack of faith as well. He asks the Lord Jesus to do something for the boy if he can. What a question. And the, Jesus picks up this doubt because he asks if he can. Repeating the man's condition, amen. Uh, he said, in essence, he responds by saying, what do you mean if I can? He goes on to assure the man that anything is possible if he has faith. And at least two previous occasions, Jesus had linked healing to faith in him. Come to Mark 5 verse 34 and 36. In verse 34 he said, Unto a daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole from thy plague. And in verse 36, as soon the Bible said, as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. So we recognize from these two passages that healing was done because of faith. It appears that the only thing preventing the man's son from being healed is his faith. And he realizes that he has already betrayed a lack of faith. And so he wants to express faith 
but at the same time, be genuine. So he says, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. In essence, my fellow saints, he says, my faith is far from perfect. I may not have enough faith. If my faith is not enough, please help me to have enough. And so when we understand, as the text put it this way, I do have faith. Please help me to have even enough. Jesus is pleased with his response. And what he did, he healed the boy. Most Christians can identify with this man from time to time. It is the acknowledgement of our inadequacy that allows God to work in our lives on our behalf. This is true at the point of salvation, my fellow saints and friends. Salvation comes to inadequate sinners who realize their need to ask for forgiveness. Don't get the wrong impression and think you're okay. Luke 5 verse 32 said, I came not to call righteous. The Lord is telling the Pharisees and the scribes, I came to call sinners to repentance. Only sinners would need to call, amen, to repentance. A change of mind, a change of life. But Jesus had here blazed a path for all soul winners. The self-satisfied are the hard ones to win, and they often resent efforts to win them to Christ. In the same way, Christians know that the, what the Bible says, and we do trust God to take care of and direct our lives. But fellow saints, sometimes we are faced with something that seems to overpower our faith. We don't seem to have enough faith to follow him in that moment. So we ask for more. We acknowledge that even our faith, amen, comes from God. It is his work in our lives, my fellow friends and brethren, that enables us to believe and to obey. Oh, my fellow saints, as always, we can ask for what we need when we doubt we can ask for more faith. When we are wavering in our resolve to follow, we can ask for more resolve. When we are unwilling to obey, we can ask to be willing. An unbeliever has no interest in having more faith or being made willing to obey. My fellow friends, the believer knows that his faith and obedience are always deficient. And he will frequently ask God to enable him to live the life that pleases God. If left to our own strength and our own faith, we would never make it. I believe, he said, help my unbelief is at once a statement of faith and an admit admission that our faith is far from perfect. Just as the Lord, amen, stood ready to help this father whose son was sore vexed. So is he, my fellow friends and brethren, ready to help our unbelief today so that with faith we can survive our mortal struggles and come off as a conqueror. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the first principle of the gospel and is more than mere belief. Faith is a hope for the things which are not seen, which are true. Faith always moves its possessor to physical and mental action. My fellow friends and brethren, when you have faith, losing our defeat is not on our agenda. To have faith in Jesus Christ means to have such trust in him that we obey whatever he commands. And so there is no faith where there is no obedience. Faith comes from hearing the word of God and is a spiritual gift. My fellow friends and brethren, faith increases when we are not only hearers, but act on the word of God as well. In obedience, amen, to the truths we have been taught. That's the reason Mary, the mother of Jesus, could say, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. 
and so my fellow brethren in Judaism, while it is generally translated as faith or trust in God, the concept of enuna can more accurately be described as an innate conviction, a perception of truth that transcends reason. The rabbis had him in an understanding of faith in a deeper sense than we do. Hebrew 11 verse 6, which we regular quote said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, must believe that he is who he said he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is no possibility of pleasing God. And if so, then no possibility of being saved without faith. That's the foundation of all obedience and service to God. It is a firm belief of his being a rewarder of all them that diligently seek him, my fellow friends. As I conclude, my fellow friends and brethren, one cannot, amen, be convicted unless God allows you, amen. You cannot feel guilty unless the Holy Ghost allows you to. If you are feeling guilty and empty and fearful of the future, because you need to take the Holy Ghost, my fellow brethren and friends, brothers and sisters. It's the Holy Ghost in operation in your life. Receive the Lord right now. He's available to every one of us. Hallelujah. You can lift your hand even now and say, Lord, I believe. But give me more confidence to believe. My fellow friends and brethren, I recognize the word, the words of that father when he saw the condition of his son. He said, Lord, I believe, but help though my unbelief. Give me confidence, strength me. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to seek the Lord. Let's continue to listen to his word. Amen. For the Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lift your faith and believe and have confidence because God is able to, en to strengthen you and to make you right to receive what he has already determined to bless us with. Today I pronounce this blessing upon us as we receive it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up its countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. You might believe, but you need help. But help is in the word of the Lord. Because as I repeat, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Receive this word today and apply your hearts to wisdom and serve God. God bless you and have a great day. Thanks for staying with us. I know you were blessed. Please remember to subscribe to our social media platforms, Facebook and YouTube. You may also email us at graceapostolica.ljcj@gmail.com at gmail.com with your prayer request. God bless you.